Hey everyone, Junk Simulations here from the Flight Simulator Freelance Society and today we have another follow-up tutorial video. So this one's going to be uh, part two, I guess, of bone animations and armatures in Blender. And um, if you haven't watched my first video, it's about 45 minutes where we actually took a look at a flight stick and we animated the base of the yoke with the leather. Uh, to move and bend around with the flight stick. So that's actually a great video. If you need to do that to your own project, go ahead and watch that. Um, in this video, it's probably going to be a little bit shorter because I'm not going to be explaining the full process. So if you need an introduction to bone animations, go watch that video first, then pop on over here. So in this video specifically, we're going to be talking about um, landing gear, specifically single bar landing gear. And uh, what we're going to be trying to do here is to add an armature to this so that when you land on the ground, it will compress and contract really nicely um, the way it should. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing you want to do is you want to isolate everything we're going to be working on. So let's go ahead and click on our tires and our gear. And those are isolated. And you can do that by hitting forward slash on the numpad. Um, and then we're going to want to start adding an armature to our first object here. So in case you guys don't know, there this is actually was four parts. We had a single bar, we had screw, we had crossbars, and when we had our wheel fairing. When you're doing bone animations, everything needs to be in one object. So specifically, I joined all these up together um, so that they all move together and that they're all basically one mesh. However, the tires... That's a little bit more difficult because the Sobo decided to basically have a tire blur and a tire still within the game and you know arguably it does look pretty good but because of that we can't really tie it to the mesh because it needs to retroactively switch between the two nodes on the fly in the game. I haven't figured out a good way to do that yet to make it work with uh, um, anim or armature animation. So luckily for us, it's a simple landing gear that just bends up and down. We're just going to manually track it, and I'll show you guys how I track it. It's kind of an annoying process, but it doesn't take too long, and the end result looks really good. So um, yeah, so let's start. The first thing you want to do is you want to click the object you're going to animate. Go ahead and drop into object mode. And as you can see here, I've already selected my two faces where I'm going to be starting my bone right at the tip of the bar. And then to put a cursor there, you just do Shift S, cursor to select it, and it will drop this red and white checkered circle right there at that point. Next, you want to go to Object Mode. You want to add a armature, and that will drop your first bone into the scene. Now, let's go ahead and just scale that down for the sake of seeing stuff right now. And uh, as you can see, it's pointed up. So we want it to follow the curve of our bar. And the easiest way to do that is to just select loops on our uh, landing gear and then um, basically a uh, cursor to select it everything. So that's what I'm going to do here. As you can see, I'm going to go to edit mode. And I'm just going to hold alt on my keyboard. Uh, actually, let's go to edge mode first. Then hold alt on my keyboard and select this loop. As you can see, it selects the whole loop around. And then I'm just going to do shift S, cursor to select it. Go back into object mode. Click on the bone, go to edit mode, click on the tip, and do shift S selection to cursor. Now, as you can see here, let's see, just so we can see here, the bone is now in there and it is uh, tracking onto the spar. And you're probably going to want to track every single spar all the way down to the base. Um, even though we're only going to be animating a couple of those bones, it will just be nice and smoother and for honestly in the future if you ever want to come back and change it it's going to be nice to have your bones uh, laid across the entire bar uh, so let's do that so while we're here um, clicking on the tip of your bone hit E on your keyboard to extrude or add a second bone and then uh, let's go ahead and go back to this go to edit mode hold alt select our second spar shift S cursor to selected Click back on our bone, edit mode, shift S, selection to cursor, and you guys can kind of see the picture. So you can just watch me as I do this um, down the entire um, spar uh, of the landing gear.
And then down here near the uh, bottom, we probably don't have to track all these mini spars as you can see. Let's just go ahead and head right to the very bottom-ish right here. There we go. And then let's add that as our last bone. Come on. There we go. All right, so as you can see here, we have our bone laying in our landing gear. And then specifically, we're probably going to be only messing with maybe this bone right here and this bone right here. Um, but this is going to be showing something else in this video that we didn't do in the fly stick video. And that is because the bone is sitting nice and centered in this bar area. And then once you get here, it's uh, sitting nice and flat against the fairing. I'm going to show you guys how to do this with automatic weights. So let's go ahead and hide our tires so we can see what we're doing here. Um, let's go ahead and rename this to uh, left um, gear armature. And then um, let's go ahead and parent the uh, gear left by clicking on it. Hold control and click on your left gear armature and then do control P and what we're going to be doing for this one is armature to form but armature to form with automatic weights okay so by clicking on automatic weights which you probably shouldn't do for complex projects for something simple though like a bar um, you can get away with this um, what it does is it drops um, automatic weight paints for each bone depending on where it's laying in your scene so if we actually click on our uh, um, our left gear right now and we go down to our bones and then let's go ahead and click on weight paint you can see what I'm talking about here so you can see it automatically is painting this thing per bone and uh, we're gonna need to fix a couple things but for the most part this will work splendid okay so now what we're going to need to do is a uh, simple animation so let's go ahead and uh, jump back into forward view this is going to be the easiest to do it let's uh, get out of weight paint obviously let's click on our bones and uh, let's go ahead and go into pose mode so what we're going to do for the first one we're going to take this bone right here and we're going to animate this okay and compression if you don't already know is 0 to 100 is the gear going um, from inside the aircraft to out of the aircraft and then 100 to 200 is the compression when it hits the ground or with weight okay so obviously this is static gear so we don't have it coming in and out of the aircraft so I'm just going to add a, a, ro a rotation keyframe at 0 I'm going to go to 100 and I'm going to add another rotation keyframe so it's doing nothing during this time because I don't have uh, landing gear going in and out of the aircraft and then 0 or I mean 100 to 200 is when we're going to slightly animate this okay so the best thing I like to do is I like to keep this uh, I probably should have set that first let me do that real quick I always go to XYZ Euler instead of Quaternion because it's easier to um, C angles okay so from here as you can see if I click let's make sure you're on global too because some of these bones like this one are a little wonky and turned around so if you were on local your access would be all weird and you don't want a weird axis so go ahead when you click on stuff just go to a global when you're doing the animation for landing gear specifically you could have as you were placing these bones in here you could have tried your hardest to like make these centered all the way down but for our purpose we're just going to be uh, using global alright so now that we're in global let's go ahead and rotate this and as you can see over here you can kinda of see the changes in angles we're just going to move this probably not too much because we're going to be doing two bone animation let's just go right here and then we're going to add our animation now as you can see here we got a little nice bend but the thing is see some of these bolts and screws down here 
they're not working, they're not moving, okay? So we just need to modify that specific bone's weights. So the easiest way to do it is go back to object mode and uh, actually, let's figure out what bone this was first. The one we selected is right here, it says bone number bone.002. Now it'll be easy if you'd name your own bones, I'm just not gonna do it for this tutorial, but you can name them to whatever you want so you can easily find it later. Anyways, bone.002. So click on our object, let's go to bone.002. And then let's go to uh, um, edit mode real quick. And we're gonna select our fairing, we're gonna select all these nuts. And we're gonna select the crop or uh, this little crossbar section here. There we go. And it looks like everything is selected there. So make sure you're on bone 002. We're gonna assign it 100% weight because we want it to move with the bend. So 1.0 weight, and then we're gonna hit assign. Okay, and now if we go back into the animation, you can see the whole thing is moving now. So basically, if you went at weight paint, we just basically said, hey, you need to move this bar. And what we can do too, if we really want to, but it is bending this bar really well, but you could even paint this fully red if you're kind of nervous about the results on how it's gonna bend. Um, but it, it's working fine. So you can just leave that. Uh, after that, let's go into another bone, okay? So we'll go back to keyframe 100. So we did bone 002. Let's go ahead, go to pose mode, and let's do this bone right here as well, and give it a little bit more of a bend. So we're gonna add a keyframe. You gotta start once again at zero, go to 100, add another keyframe, because nothing's happening during that time. And then from 100 to 200, we're gonna do slight animation, probably, let's see, probably there. And then all together, this is our animation. Now, I'm, it's not the prettiest. Um, <laughs> for the sake of the tutorial, I'm probably gonna fi fine tune this later. But you can see how you get in this nice bend and it doesn't look so fake. Uh, and then once again, we're gonna have to fix the weight paintings. You can see the screws aren't following from 100 to 200 anymore. So uh, you can just go to 200 here. Let's uh, go back into object mode, just go into edit because we already have all this stuff selected that we need to. Um, and we need to actually, I need to figure out what bone that was. Um, it was bone number 004. Okay, so go back into edit mode, select all the stuff you want to move with 004, select 004 and hit assign. And then um, if we go back into object mode, everything is moving now, okay? So there, there's your simple bone animation. And with weight painting, um, you can do some more complex stuff or if you have a couple extra bars or maybe like a hydraulic line that moves a little differently and needs to track something else, you can add different weight paints to it and uh, get it working like that. Uh, but there you go. So now that we have that bone animation settled, the next thing to do is to take that armature and we're going to um, go, or actually before we do that, we're going to hit Shift S on the keyboard. We're going to go cursor to world origin, so that will drop it to the center. Then up here, there's the uh, transform pivot point. We're going to change this to 3D cursor, so now it's going to be curse or uh, the transform origin point will be on 000. And we're going to click our armature. We're going to hold Shift D to duplicate it. Now we have a left gear armature 001, so we're actually going to name this to right gear armature. And then we're going to go to object, mirror, x global. And that just drops it x global because we already made it. We don't need to do it again. I'm, a, I'm hoping your guys' landing gear is the same and that you guys have just mirrored it like this to make it easier on yourself. But, uh, yep, there you go. And then uh, as you can see here, it's doing the same thing. It's bending outwards because it's mirrored. Now you don't have to worry about um, um, applying any scale or anything to that armature just yet because we do that at the very end of the video anyways. We apply everything. Um, 
but now you're just going to be doing the same process that's why this side's a little bit faster we're going to be clicking on our, our make sure you go back here and change this just so you don't forget so individual origins anyways go back here we're going to click on our right gear armature we're going to kick, click on our gear right and then we're going to go control P control P with automatic weights and you're probably going to have to fix some stuff as you can see here it left some of those nuts out so uh, let's go ahead and click on here and um, we'll click on bone 002 actually we need to go to edit mode on this thing first yeah so highlight all the stuff you want to bend looks like this one actually left out that nut in here which I needed I don't think the other one did we'll take a look at that um, and go to bone 2 we need to assign 100% and then bone 4 assign 100% okay so now if you look at it it is now animating with the other side okay now let's go make sure this nut right here was actually attached it was okay so just left that out with the automatic weight paints on the other side so we don't really have to worry about that too much uh, okay so let's go ahead and hide this tire here so the next thing we're going to need to do is you're going to want to um, take these armatures <coughs> one second here that's my dog Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and move this left and right gear into my master controller um, just so I don't have everything showing here so it's not confusing. Um, basically, as you can see here, I like to uh, basically sort my collections here by exterior or interior or all for both. Um, and the landing gear animation, I just kind of throw in the master controller um, for now. Um, but when you export, you don't you obviously don't put the landing gear in the interior. Um, so I'll, I'll probably make a master controller interior and a master control, controller exterior as well. Um, anyways, aside from the point, uh, rambling on. But let's go ahead and right click on your right gear armature. Select the whole hierarchy so it selects everything in there. And what we're going to be doing for this one is control A. And we're going to do all transforms. Then we're going to do the same thing with the left gear. Control A, all transforms. And now that's moving the bone to the origin point at 000. Um, it's changing this bone that was having that scaling issue. It's changing that to 1.0. And then um, um, it's, it's keeping the animations as well. So you can see the animations on both sides are working really nice. Um, so the next thing is, remember with bones, if you haven't watched my last video, bones need to be centered on the zero point they don't be centered on 50 or 100 so we actually need to slide all these animations over to the uh, um, the, the the zero point for neutral however we can't do that yet until we bake so the first thing you need to do let's go into animation mode and then here's our right gear animation and our left gear is somewhere here we go left gear animation And what we're going to do here is we're going to click on our left gear first. We're going to go into uh, pose mode, which we're already there. Make sure you have all bones selected by hitting A. Um, as you can see there, we didn't have all bones selected, um, but now we do. Actually, this is being rather weird. I'm going to isolate this stuff just because... I don't want to mess around. All right, click on the bone, go to pose mode. There we go. Click A. See now, I don't know what happened there, but you need to make sure that all your bones are selected. In this case, we only animated two bones, two and four, on the landing gear. So just make sure that they're showing up down here on the dope sheet before you drop or, or, or do any kind of baking. So now that we have all those selected, let's go up to pose. Go up to animation, bake animation. Make sure you start at one, end at 200. Visual keying, clear constraints. So these three are selected. We need to clear the parents, overwrite, and the clean curves. Actually, the start frame is zero for that, my bad. Zero to 200. 
and then uh, top three selected, top or bottom three not selected, make sure you're on pose, click OK. Okay, now you can see it dropped every single bone frame by frame to, a, to an animation because it baked it into the track. That is exactly what we need. So now we're going to go ahead and drop that to an NLA track. And then we need to go to start editing stashed actions while we're here. You need to select everything with A and you need to hit G on your keyboard and slide it to neutral. So we're going to 100 on the tail end here. So we go 0 to 100, pretty much as the animation we need is 0 to 100. And then negative 100 to 0 will be your uh, retract and extend. Okay, so that one's good. Let's go do the other side now. So let's go back into object mode, select this armature, go into pose mode, hit A to select all your bones. Make sure you have your two bones that you animated here. Go to pose, animation, bake animation. Make sure you change that again to 0 to 200. And then it should left your settings here from before. So the top three, remove the bottom three, make sure it's on pose and hit OK. Takes a little bit to bake, there we go. So now that this is done baking, and don't worry that your bones have the same name, the SDK builder will actually rename those bones. I'll show that to you guys uh, before the end of the video. Um, but there we go, so that one's dropped. So while we're here, drop that to a NLA track. We need to edit it, make sure you have all your bones selected, and then move with G, put that on 100. There you go. So now this side's animating, the other side's animating, they're dropped to the NLA tracks. Now we need to name these NLA tracks, okay? So I use the Sobo templates for everything. So uh, let's go ahead and look at what I've already said. I pretty much got a, a standard by default now. I'm using the Sobo gear center, the Sobo gear left, the gear right, and then the tire left, the tire right, and the tire center. So for this one, specifically, we're using the uh, Asobo contact point template. You can assign the ID of the contact point to it, and then the animation name, and then only compression true, because we're only worrying about compression. We're not doing extension, extending and retracting. Um, and this is our gear left, so let's take that anime name of gear left, copy that. Go into our left gear animation armature. Post that name there, the NLA track. And then let's go do the the, the uh, gear right. And I always copy and paste in case there's an odd character that I missed. Um, I could have just pasted the left one and changed it to right, but I don't have that much faith in my coding, so <laughs> I always copy and paste just to ensure that there isn't a, a, a space or an underscore or something that I'm missing. Um, yeah, so there you go. So the next thing we need to do is uh, tire animations with the same. Now. Uh, as sure if a lot of you guys know, when you're doing two animations to the same, um, uh, for example, let's see, I got I got one here, I think. So we, I got an aileron left small and an aileron right big, or a right small and a right big, okay? So both these are ailerons on this aircraft, and as you guys know, you can assign the same animation name. So we got right aileron percent key here and right aileron percent key here. So in together, they move together in game. Now if I would have took this right aileron and moved it to like the, uh, the, 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 the 20 mark, so like this, and tried to save it like that, thinking it will work like that in game, it won't, okay? So your your animations need to be the same length in the same position on the timeline um, in order for it to work. So when we're animating our tires here, and the whole reason I even brought this up is because we need to make sure that we're animating from zero to 200 and then we're moving it once again down to negative 100 after we drop it so that the zero point is neutral, okay? Okay, so the first thing let's do, let's... uh. Go ahead and show our tires. Now what we're going to want to do here is click on one of our tires where our origin is centered to the tire. Um, assuming you have done that already. And then we're going to do Shift S, cursor to selected, and we're going to select um, the center of the tire right there. 
and then we're going to add an empty plain access okay and let's just move that under the same collection here and we're going to name this uh, left tire master and then we're going to take our left tire hold control take our blur and then we're going to hold shift and then hold alt to uh, set the parents and keep transform and we're going to drop it right on top of the left tire master okay and then we're going to do the same thing to the other side Take your tire, shift S, cursor to selected, add, empty, plain access, drop it under the collection, and we're going to name this to right tire master. And uh, make sure you guys are doing this at keyframe zero. Um, I guess it doesn't really matter right now just because the tire is not moving. Um, <laughs> but always remember you're, you're setting and keeping transforms to animations at the keyframe you want it to or else you could screw things up when you start parenting it to other objects anyways so let's take that right tire do the same thing drop those under the right tire master alright so now what we need to do like I was saying we need to make sure that our animation path follows the same timeline okay because it's going to be using the same name we're going to be using the gear right for the tire movement as well so we're going to unfortunately I don't know how to get down to 100 to set a keyframe I'm sure there's a setting up in here I need to figure out but I'm just going to do key set we're going to do location and rotation we're going to click on the the left tire master okay we're not going to be animating these at all we're going to be animating the master and we're going to do keyframe from 0 to 100 doing nothing and then we're just going to slew those down to 0 Okay, so now that we're set with negative 100 to 0 doing nothing, and now let's go 0 to 100 with the movement. Now there's really no easy way to do this. Uh, what I do is I just go to front view, I'll go to the first keyframe, and what I'll do is I'm going to measure out what you've seen here already. So I just measure from the top of the movable object down to the bottom of the tire, which is uh, 0.125 and then um, I do the same thing from something I can spot on on this side as well in this case I'm going to take this little cut out here to the edge of my tire so 0 0.019 so let's take those numbers and let's just go uh, put them down in a, a notepad or something so you don't forget them so 0.125 long and then 0 0.019 for side okay and then just put that on the side so you have those reference numbers um, anyway so yeah so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go down to keyframe 100 you're going to take your left tire master and you're going to rotate it so that your tire is lining up so the best way to do this is kind of get it looking a little straight and then rotate whoa, rotate this axis and when you're doing this, you know, it helps that you're on global because a animation for this is just pretty easy um, on global because it's straightforward. It's not very complex animation. And then you're going to want to get your tire lining up visually probably the best you can. And another easy way to do it would probably just be to, like, move it here so you can kind of see. Actually, let's change it to local here so we're moving the tire. So you can kind of see it line up with the uh, the fairing itself. And I would say that's pretty good. We can probably, and if you want to do fine changes, hold shift on your keyboard and you can do fine changes. About right there is probably perfect. Okay, so let's drop the tire down. And then while we're sitting at keyframe 100, let's go ahead and measure out 0.125. And then measure out from here 0.019. Okay, and then this is where I smudge my poor screen. Okay, so I actually what the easiest way I figured out is I ho hold my finger on my screen right here, my finger nail, <laughs> basically at the tip of this measurement, so that when I click on my tire and I go to move, see how my dimensions disappear, but I can still grab it and drag it to my fingernail, and then by the time I go back into dimensions, you can see it lines up. Okay, so it's a pretty stupid way to do it but it's the best that I found 
So I just kind of hold my fingernail on each point here and then I move the tire to where it needs to go. Oh, and also see how I screwed up here? I clicked on the tire. I need to make sure I'm not doing that. I need to undo what I just did there. And I need to make sure that I'm on my left tire master. I'm moving the master, okay? So once again, go back to the dimensions, take my fingernail to a point, and then move the master. So it moves both tires, not just one, to the point I need. Okay, and then go ahead and add that keyframe. So now you got your tires moving with your gear, okay? And um, uh, just want to make sure that both tires are moving. Yep, cool. So I did a. Uh, you're removing your master and you're basically tracking it to your bone. Uh, it's not perfect, but it will work in our case. And then you're going to be doing the same thing for this side. So something to take a note here, just go from 0 to 100 and look at this uh, angle. So negative 876. So go ahead and put that in here somewhere. 8.76. Okay. And then since this side was negative 0.876, this side will be positive. Okay. So what you're going to do here once again, go keyframe 0 to keyframe 100, and then you're going to slew that over. And then you're going to go from a keyframe 0 to 100 again, but you're going to change your Y to 8.76. And then you're just going to be doing the same thing with the uh, dimensions here. And as you can see, I already set these up earlier when I was working on this project. So uh, we can just take our right tire master, uh, and I forgot to hold my fingernail to the screen. Really, this is an easy way to do it. I feel bad for my screen, but I don't push down hard. <laughs> and uh, move the tire to where it needs to go here. Once again, you can hold shift on your keyboard to get really fine movements. And then let's go ahead and get this moved right here. Wow, it's almost spot on. Just needs a little slight adjustment this way. And there we go. So let's go ahead and drop that keyframe. And we got uh, tire tracking with our bone movements, okay? Uh, and this is how it would probably work in, in, in all honesty because the tires is not gonna actually bend uh, like the bar is when it hits the ground. You know, a tire is gonna stay a tire. It's gonna be a nice little circle. So this is an easy way to do it. Um, but like I said, you need to make sure when we drop these, which we're going to do now, the right tire master, we're going to drop it. You need to make sure that it's matching the negative 100 to the 100. If not, it's going to screw up all your bone animation and you're not going to know what's wrong. Okay. You're going to think your bones wrong when in reality, it's just your second tire that's wrong. And it's, it's a real easy fix. Just make sure they line from 0, 100 to 100, uh, doing the same animation. Okay. So let's copy our gear right, drop that into the right tire master and then copy our gear left and drop that into the left tire master okay so now those are both working with gear compression and it should just do just do that right there now we want tire animations okay so now we can go into our empties our individual empties click on each tire and we can add just a rotation from 0 to uh, 100 this one doesn't have to match because it's going to be a different animation entirely it's not following the gear center, or I mean the gear uh, left and gear right. Uh, so we go to 100 keyframes and we just change the, uh, let's see, is it the X axis? It is. For some odd reason, I have 9.94 here. So we're going to do a quick little calculation. Uh, do 360 plus 9.94, and we're going to get 369.94. I'm just going to copy that. And in here, I'm going to paste that and then add the keyframe and right click change it to linear because uh, tire rotation needs to be linear and then do the same thing with my tire still 0 to 100 paste that in here add the keyframe right click linear okay so my tires are rotating on that side and then in here make sure on an individual tire add keyframe 0 go to 100 and then rotate that 
right click linear, and then tire steel, zero to 100, paste that, right click linear. All right, so there's our tire animations. Now, once again, these are based on your, uh, um, your, your, your templates, and I'm using specific, specifically gear left tire and gear right tire for my animation. So I'm going to take my gear left tire on my still um, and my blur, and then I'm going to take my gear right tire on my um, right and my right tire blur. Now these don't matter, remember, because these are different animations. My gear right tire and my gear right are not the same animation track, so they don't have to match this kind of uh, following. Uh, it's basically anything that's on the same path does, and since bones require a uh, neutral point at zero, you have to do that with your, with your, with your tire master. So um, yeah, that, that, that is it. So we just added compression to our aircraft and I'm going to go ahead and show you in game do a little quick tips and tricks there about what it's doing and then like I said don't worry about um, renaming your bones all of our bones are named like bone 2 is named bone 2 on the right side I'm going to show you as we build um, uh, why that doesn't matter okay so let's go ahead and I'm not going to save this because I've already done this I just redid it for the video but uh, go ahead and export that And then on your project, go ahead and build your project. And this is a very simple, small project, so don't worry about me pausing the video for this. But while that's doing that, I'm going to go ahead and open up Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now, if you don't know what this is, this is manual building outside of the game, the FS package tool, which you can go into uh, where you installed your SDK, go to tools, go to uh, bin, and it's right here, the FH package tool. I just copy that um, and then I paste it next to my project XML and then I can just drag that on top of it whenever I feel like building out of the game. Um, okay, so you hit okay there. Now the game's opening up, so I'm just gonna pause it. I'll, I'll be back when uh, the game's open. All right, we are back in the game. So let's go ahead and open our project. And uh, something to keep in note here, whenever you start adding compression to your animation, um, your contact points on your tires will probably shift. So whatever you set will probably shift and you'll need to fix those contact points. Um, I've already fixed mine on this aircraft specifically, um, but just keep, keep that aware that they will shift um, when, you're, when you're working with uh, compression. Because as you add weight to the aircraft, now that you have a compression animation track, y your compression will basically be based off the weight of the aircraft. Um, so your contact points will shift. Because before you were, you were messing with it at a static location, and now that you're actually animated for weight change, uh, your tires will probably be either in the ground or above the ground. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and look at our tires here. And uh, the easiest way to check this to make sure it's working, obviously I can already tell because this, this tire is at a slight angle right now because we have some weight on it. Um, but what you can do here is you can just drop more weight on it. And let's see if it, see how it's kind of changing. You can kind of see the bend there with the tire. Um, but let's go ahead and show another thing which you can do. You can go to uh, Aircraft Editor. And specifically, you can click on Contacts and Brakes. And it will pull up this little aircraft wheels. And here you can see the compression. So right now on my top front two tires, I have 77% compression. And uh, that will change with weight and as we take off. And then something too, I'm going to show this out here right now, your contact points the three things that you want to work with if your compression's not looking good in game okay so if for some odd reason they're not compressing or they're not compressing enough or they don't look that good 
or they're bouncing all over the place as you're trying to roll, um, you need to mess with these three. So your static compression, your max to static compression, and your damping ratio, okay? And I'm not gonna go ahead and explain everything on this. You can go ahead and read the SDK if you want more explanation of what each one does. But uh, this is what I found looks really good. So maybe take a picture, 0.25, 1.25, and 0.25. Um, obviously, you're going to be wanting to follow real specs for this. But for the sake of my animation, this looked really nice. Um, and I'll just go ahead and show you kind of what this does. So let's go ahead and go into showcase camera. Let's just get in front of my aircraft here. So I can kind of show you guys what this gear is doing. Let's get out of aircraft editor and then we'll start driving on the runway so you can guys can see the bounce of the landing gear. So you can kind of see the animation here. You can see that slight compression uh, going with it. You can also see the tires animating and blurring. This is a tail dragger so it's a little squirrely right now. And then if we start landing you can see the compression as you hit the ground. So so the, yeah that, that is a uh, that's basically the uh, how to do armatures with your landing gear. And uh, let me go ahead and fix this before I crash this aircraft. This thing's uh, really small, so it's a uh... <laughs> this little motor glider I'm working on. Um, but uh, yeah, so that that's how you do uh, armatures with your landing gear. Uh, simplest method that I've been able to figure out while I've been messing around with it. And um, hopefully you guys have learned something, and uh, you can you can take all these between the two videos. I don't know if I'll do another bone animation one. I might do one when I jump into wing flex, uh, or I don't know. Basically, the uh, the tire or the landing gear animation mixed with the yoke animation. It's the same thing for wing flex. Okay, so uh, yeah, you're doing the same thing. So now that I think you guys have a, a, an understanding on how to do bones in the project, um, I might just let bones go at this point. But if you guys ever want more bones, uh, or if there's something else you want to see me do with armatures, please let me know, and um, I'll try to cover it in another video. These videos, I always say, is going to be shorter than the last one, but once again, I think this just hit 45 minutes. So... Uh, Thank you all for sticking with it and for uh, being here and helping my journey. And, uh, yeah, I'll catch you all later. See ya.